Hello and welcome to Behavioral Health Today, a commentary from Medivan's Billing Service. I'm Lakeisha Bennett. Today we're talking with Buddhist meditation teacher Dave Smith. Dave Smith is the guiding teacher and program director for Against the Stream Meditation Center in Nashville, Tennessee. He teaches those in recovery from addiction and mental health issues how to apply Buddhist principles to sustain their recovery. Now Dave is part of a secular mindfulness and meditation movement inspired by Noah Levine, who is the author of the memoir Dharma Punks, which recounts Levine's drug-addled past and describes the usefulness of Buddha techniques for former addicts. Now Dave knows the power of channeling energy into Buddhist exercises. He's in recovery himself. His tattoos and rock and roll attitude paint him as hardcore and authentic with a serious commitment to promote the Dharma punks mentality. Now, as a longtime Buddhist practitioner, Dave has been working closely with recovering addicts for the past five years, and he does have extensive experience bringing meditative interventions into jails, prisons, youth detentions, and addiction treatment facilities. I recently sat down with Dave and asked him what motivated him to get involved with the behavioral health industry. Well, I, um, I'm a drug addict and I'm in recovery and um, I've been clean for about 10 years. And um, I was introduced to mindfulness meditation and Buddhist meditation as a teenager. I went through a lot of traumatic stuff, a lot of loss, a lot of grief when I was a teenager and I got turned on to mindfulness practice and, and, and Buddhist practice. And fast forward 10 years later, I got clean, I got sober and started to get more into that practice. And then about six years ago, I started working with adolescents in an um, inpatient treatment facility, which is a difficult job and working with a lot of resistance with youth, um, trying to get them interested in recovery ideas or modalities on some level. I started teaching them mindfulness meditation and started to talk a little bit about some of the basic core philosophy around uh, Buddhism or, or Dharma, and they really liked it. They really felt connected to it. They really felt like there was some value with that, kind of the using the internal experience. And, uh, and that's what really got me launched into what I do now. I teach over 300 meditation classes a year. I work with adolescents. I work in treatment facilities. I work in jails. I, work, I teach at the public library in Nashville. So that's really what, what got me into it. And I'm very into it now and um, really dedicated to the work that I'm doing. I also asked Dave, what someone can expect from a mindful meditative approach to recovery. Well, mindfulness has become quite popular and pretty relevant in the field of mental health, working with anxiety, depression, and stress, which is also true for addiction treatment. But as a tool for people with addiction, mindfulness is limited in the sense that it doesn't bring too much of a quality of, in Buddhism, what we call heart practice, or things like kindness, friendliness, compassion, forgiveness, appreciation, so that as we work with mindfulness, we want to develop some qualities to meet what's difficult for us, what's good for us. Um, and so that's really what, I, what I'm a big proponent of, is trying to get people to, to not only look within and to kind of see what's arising in their experience, but how to meet it with more of a quality of non-harming, some compassion for some of the suffering they've experienced, some forgiveness around some of the things that they've done. And so for me, there's two questions in meditation. There's what's happening right now, what is arising in my experience, and what am I meeting it with, how am I holding it? And that's really, I think, the root of the work that we're doing now is trying to get people to meet their experience with, a, with, with qualities that are rooted in just not causing harm. Dave discusses some of the challenges he faces daily on his approach towards recovery. The biggest challenge, I think, for everybody always is working with resistance. Is even in my own meditation, even in my own life, that I'm always confronted with my, uh, my mind, my emotion, some resistance against discomfort. And I think that one of the things that happens when people work with uh, people in the mental health field is that they come into contact with a lot of people's resistance and then we resist that. Um, so I think that developing a skill set around working with resistance, your own resistance, other people's resistance, and giving people some practices and some vocabulary about how to just handle discomfort, how to handle stress, unpleasant physical sensations, too much 
anxiety in the mind. Teaching people how to work with resistance to me seems to be kind of the root skill of all of it. Now, when it comes to helping erase the stigma associated with having a behavioral health disorder, I asked Dave what he thinks can be done to continue to break the stigma. I really think that's great that you're doing that. I think that's a lot of problem for a lot of people is there's this kind of cultural idea or cultural perspective that kind of says that people who are addicted are like, you know, there's something wrong. Um, and I think at the core of most people who struggle with addiction, there can be a self-view associated with this kind of, I'm a bad person. Um, and I think that what that does is that feeds into the shame and that feeds into the guilt and that feeds into that part of the emotional experience. And I think empowering people who are in recovery to come forth and empowering people to actually use what has been a struggle in their lives. So like breaking the heart open into freedom, into liberation and breaking the heart open into positive qualities is really what I think is going to help with that, with people having some self-respect and some confidence about, hey, like my life used to be a mess and it's not anymore. And actually having some empowerment around that. Uh, so I, I, I was talking to, um, is his name William McCormick? Mm -hmm. Last yeah. night, I love that guy, Bill, and we had a conversation about that. And I think that that's really culturally something that we need to try to do. And finally, Dave emphasizes the importance of realizing the power within you. I think that people need to begin to understand that everything that they need is actually inside of them and that turning towards your life and turning towards what's difficult is actually what's going to give people ultimately uh, some freedom. And uh, I'm part of a bigger picture called Against the Stream. So please check out againstthestream.com, againstthestreamnashville.com. We're a nonprofit organization. We teach meditation classes around the country. We don't charge. All of our programs are free. No one's turned away for lack of funds. So if you'd like to get involved or help us, please do so. That's all for this edition of Behavioral Health Today. We hope you have been enlightened, and this commentary will help you change the conversation about behavioral health disorders. If you'd like to receive your copy of this commentary, or if you want to learn more about behavioral health today, just go to medevancebilling.com. I'm Lakeisha Bennett. Thank you for watching.